All right, today we are going to do a review of the Ultra Duo 1.5. And I'm gonna give a very big warning to anyone interested in entering the world of Ultra running shoes. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the vlog. Today we're going to talk about the Ultra Duo 1.5 running shoes. These have been my daily shoe for the last few months as I prepare for the uh, Boston Marathon in September, the virtual version of the Boston Marathon. So uh, that is going to take place in the middle of September, around September 15th, around that time. But I've been doing most of my daily runs, including my last long run, which is about 18 and a half miles yesterday in the Ultra Duo 1.5s right here. So I want to give uh, some of the specifications of these shoes like I always do. I'll talk about the upper, the midsole, that kind of lacing system, that kind of thing. And then I want to talk about my uh, impressions of the running shoe over the last few months. Uh, these shoes are pretty much worn out now with several hundred miles of running on them. Uh, I've run done all kinds of different kinds of runs with these. Uh, distance runs, tempo runs, speed workouts, um, even some gravel stuff. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit and also my warning to anyone that wishes to enter into the world of ultra running shoes, the zero drop shoe. Uh, I'll talk about that as well. It's uh, something I may have talked about in the past but I really want to focus on it again today because it is a, it's something you really need to take care of. and. Um, consider if you get into these kind of shoes anyway let's get into the specifications of the shoe okay getting into the upper of the shoe this upper is different from the duo one running shoe. This is the 1.5 duo the upper is now an engineered knit upper to it as with every uh, ultra running shoe it has a foot shaped uh, uh, area here where it allows your toes to display in the forefoot area. Nice, it's a nice light, uh, breathable material. Uh, it's very good uh, for uh, longer runs in the heat, especially in the summertime. The tongue is uh, not a integrated tongue to the to the upper, so it is separated. And you can see here that's a very thin material, but it doesn't cause problems with binding with the shoelaces, the standard shoelacing system here, as you can tell, with. Uh, a center area here for your shoelaces to go through to keep the tongue in place. Going back to the upper where the heel is, it's got a nice uh, grippy heel cuff here. Uh, it's a pretty high heel and we'll talk about an issue that I experienced with the heel counter area here. But uh, all in all, it's very grippy. It holds your foot very well. Uh, there's a little bit of padding right in this area. This cutout here is kind of strange and some people may not like it, but it doesn't cause any binding or, or chafing of the ankle area. Again, holds the foot in nicely, locks down very well. The material does stretch a little bit, so you can see my as I've been tying my shoes tighter, uh, they're almost, there's nothing left. I've got them all the way tied as far as they'll go. Um, if we get to the midsole, there is a here, area here where it helps give some uh, structure to the shoe. It's uh, like a rubberized material. It's not really the midsole because your foot sits inside of that area. So just a, kind of like a, a guide area um, on the Ultra Paradigms. I actually do have a guide rail because this is sort of like the guide rail. Uh, here you go. It says Duo 1.5 on the back here. There are a couple little overlays here to also, also to provide a little bit of structure as well to the shoe. So just a little bit here on the right side, the medial side and the outside here. Just a little bit of overlay. Again, very breathable. Has a foot shape pod, like I mentioned. It even has a little label here saying foot shape. And uh, makes this very, shoe very light. Um, <clears throat> going into the midsole of the shoe. The midsole is a Max LT cushion, which uh, doesn't mean much to me, but it's a nice foam. It's a nice soft, responsive foam. It's soft and responsive. It's very nice, actually. Um, it has a very uh, uh, standard, uh, actually extraordinary stack height 32 millimeters it's very thick and this is a zero drop shoe all ultras are zero drop so it's zero it's 32 millimeters here and 32 millimeters here 
all the way along, even though it doesn't really look like that, but it is zero drop. So 32 millimeter stack height, which is uh, very thick for most shoes, uh, especially with ultras. And it's also a very, very light cushion to it, and, but it also provides uh, some protection as well. So when I'm running on the roads, I'm not feeling every nook and cranny and stone. I'm on the roads, even if I'm on gravel, I don't really feel a whole lot of that, just a little bit. And what helps with that is the outsole here, going to the outsole. So you have a lot of exposed foam here. So you see the exposed foam, but it also has areas of rubber and strategic areas to help with uh, durability of the shoe and have all kinds of flex areas to allow your foot to flex naturally. Uh, unfortunately, it does collect some stones and debris, like you see right there, but it hasn't been a major issue. Only occasionally will I collect a stone. So as I mentioned, this is a zero drop shoe as all ultras are, and these have a 32 millimeter sack height, as I mentioned. The weight of this shoe in size nine is 8.1 ounces, which is a very light shoe. Uh, so it has sim similar stack height, in fact, it may be more stack height than the Ultra Paradigm, which is like the max cushion shoe, but it's also lighter. So with the given the upper and the type of material used for the, for the uh, midsole, it is very, very light shoe, uh, which allows you to use it for a lot of different things. So it has a lot of cushiony for long runs, but also is light for doing your faster workouts too. In addition, it has a contoured footbed. bed. This is a five millimeter uh, contoured footbed that's in here as well and uh, it's removable as I, I just showed you so those are the specifications of the shoe now I want to go into my um, feelings about the shoe over the last few months all right so being familiar with Altra and having used Altra running shoes over the uh, last several years I've been running into Torrens, the Paradigms, um, the Paradigms, the Paradigms, uh, a lot of different shoes uh, I've gotten accustomed to the way they are with the zero drop. And I'll talk about some of the things to be cautious about there in a second. But I want to go give my impressions of the shoe and some of the positives and some of the negatives about this shoe. Um, the shoe is very good. I, I liked it. I liked it, the ability to have my toes splay uh, because of that foot shape front area here with the forefoot that's very wide and open but it's also very snug in the back so your your heel is not uh, flopping around everywhere so I really like that as well um, so I also like that it was very light like I mentioned I also like that it was very breathable uh, like the way you got locked down all that issues and there's really one main issue that I encountered not just two but one that's really bothered me and this is within the heel area here so what happens is, uh, when I noticed the first time I put the shoe on, I locked it down, it was very snug, nice and snug, not an issue, but as I went running, and I went on a five mile run, my first run, and they felt fantastic for two miles. After two miles, my uh, Achilles area of my foot uh, started to get so um, inflamed and irritated from chafing that I actually had to stop I had to try to fix the issue uh, with trying to put something in there to help cushion it and it was not working and I had uh, ended up really getting chafed and really having a bad time with blood in the back of my sock all that kind of stuff it was terrible so what I ended up having to do to remedy the issue was I would wear my compression socks but I would fold my compression socks around my ankle again as I you know, put them on and then fold them back down to help provide that extra layer of protection. And since then, I had no issues. But um, that was one major issue that I had. I can only wear certain socks with these because it really caused a lot of abrasions in the Achilles, the heel part of my foot. And it was it never went, went away. The whole time, if I tried going back to another pair of shoes, another pair of socks, it was an issue. The other issue that I had was with the tongue. The tongue did not seem to want to stay in place uh, putting the shoe on was difficult. The tongue kind of wanted to flop to one side and I had to kind of maneuver or massage the tongue to be back in place. And even after I did that, after going for a run, it seemed like the tongue wanted to migrate on its own. Even though it has the laces going through a portion of the tongue, it kind of wanted to migrate. It didn't cause any irrit uh, irrit uh, irritations, but I would notice it and it was just something that I wanted to note 
uh, that it was something that didn't look right. So those are the two major issues. I guess I went on an 18 and a half mile run in these yesterday after having run in them for several months and they felt good the whole time. I did start feeling a little bit of a hot spot on the ball of my foot, but that was just uh, potentially because it was 86 degrees out and I've been running for um, two and a half hours. So that's it for the shoe. I want to give my warning though about ultras. I may have talked about this for other ultra running shoes as well. These are a zero drop running shoe. They're unusual. They, when you are used to them, they're fantastic, but you have to get used to a zero drop shoe. Uh, most shoes have a, like Hoka's have a five millimeter drop. Asics Nikes can have eight or 10 millimeter drop or more, 12 millimeter drop in some cases. And that makes a big difference when you go to a zero drop shoe. And what it affects is it affects your calves and your Achilles to the point that it can actually cause uh, strains to those ligaments and uh, those muscles and in my case it can actually cause plantar fasciitis. So I've had this issue in the past where I was wearing a shoe that had a significant drop and I went right to wearing ultras and I caused myself injury. So if you wear ultra running shoes, if you decide to move to ultra running to zero drop type shoes, that's fine. It's how your shoe is meant to be, how you're meant to run. It's a fantastic philosophy work your way into zero drop running shoes get a pair walk around in the house every day wear them to work I wear an old pair of ultras to work every day get used to that allow your your foot and your uh, calves and your Achilles to gently over time stretch out and get accustomed to the zero drop shoe otherwise you can cause yourself injury and in my case it took me almost a year to get cured from plantar fasciitis after doing this the first time. So that's my word, word of warning with ultra running shoes is to just be careful, break into them, uh, slowly um, evolve into running into zero drop running shoes. I, I believe the philosophy behind them is fantastic. The foot shape allowing your toes to display and the small muscles in your feet allow you to, for stability. Um, I think that's a fantastic idea and that's why I love my ultra running shoes. So that's all I have to say about that. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below about uh, ultra running shoes. If you have a pair, if you're interested in running them, drop a comment, ask questions. I've been running these for many years. My wife has been running in these for many years as well. Uh, we kind of stray away sometimes when we come back to ultras. I love Hoka's as you might know. Uh, Hoka Bonda, Hoka One One's are fantastic shoes as well. But I really like the feel to let my toes uh, splay and uh, be more natural. So, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, comment down below, leave a big thumbs up on the video. Until next time, peace.